everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to another inbox review. So today I've got a review of the brand new Tamiya 112 H2R Ninja bike. So I've been waiting for this for quite some time. It's been eagerly anticipated by myself. Uh, the actual real Rogo machine is absolutely amazing. Well, I say Rogo. Uh, it's an amazing machine. Uh, ridiculous power and speed. It looks unbelievably aggressive as well. So what's not to like? Uh, the kit looks great, so I had a quick look through the box. It landed with me on Monday. Uh, it was a birthday present of my friend Sam, who's crazy. And uh, it looks to be an awesome kit. Uh, with quite a challenging paint job by the look of it. So that should be fun. Um, but by all accounts, quick look through the box. It's up to t typical Tamiya standard. So what's not to like there? The Tamiya bike kits are amazing. And this is an awesome looking machine. So let's get to the review and see what we think. So as you can see, it's got Tamiya's typical box art, absolutely fantastic. They always do real nice box art, especially the bikes. And it just shows you how aggressive that thing actually looks. It's a stunning looking bike and it's going to make a very, very nice looking uh, model as well. Like I say, on the fence, we have to build out the box. So will wait a little bit, see if we get the aftermarket out, which I'm sure we will. And uh, hope the likes of Hobby Design or Studio 27 or Top Studio will release something forward, so I think I might wait a little bit, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I've still got another bike to build, so I'm in no rush at the minute, um, but we'll certainly see what comes out over the following months. Okay, so we have a look at the front of the box art, as you can see, typical Tamiya box art, you can spot this stuff a mile off, uh, you've got a very striking depiction of the machine on the front, a little bit of information there if you want to read it, have a quick read, I'm not going to read it all, there we go, on the side we've got a side profile drawing, and a cowling see-through drawing, I suppose, but Japanese text, which I can't read. And on the other side, I'm assuming we've got real pictures of the real machine. Very, very impressive looking thing. I'm sure you'll agree. Very, very aggressive bike. Um, it is a cool looking machine. So, let's have a look inside and see what we get. So, typical Tamiya boxing. We have several sprues all laid out um let's count the screws so we've got our normal bag of screws screwdriver tires mesh this mesh stuff never never keen to see that stuff uh, which is probably why i hold out with some aftermarket so there's your screw bag and tire bag you've got the front cowling which is unbelievably aggressive so there's one sprue two sprues three sprues four five six sprues and your decals and your instructions. So there's not a whole lot into these kits. Um, but they do build up very, very well. You cannot deny the Tamiya doesn't make good bike kits. They are top draw. And uh, I've enjoyed everyone I've built so far, even when they've been a little bit energy sapping. Right, so let's start off with sprue B, which is engine and frame components by the look of it. Let's see what we got. So, there we go. That's better. Got my grey background. Right, so, can we zoom out on this one a little bit? No, we are fully zoomed out. So, like I say, on here we've got shocks, uh, brakes, engine, frame, uh, radiator, some foot controls, the turbo. Was it turbo? Supercharged. I think it's a supercharger, isn't it? On this thing. Pretty sure it's, yeah, it's supercharged. So, yeah, the supercharger's there. Typical Tamiya quality. Let's just have an overview first, and we'll have a look at the close-up parts. Very, very nice. There's no problems there at all. Typical Tamiya. So, let's have a look on the close-up camera. So, what have we got? Let's zoom in a little bit so we can get closer. So, it's from Forks. Very nice. Hopefully, somebody will bring out an aftermarket fork set. Maybe even Tamiya will. We've got discs. The cylinder block to the frame very nice to the half of the frame as well that gets painted in an absolutely beautiful looking candy green color supercharges down the bottom is very very nicely depicted onto other parts of the engine the front and rear disc as well uh, brake calipers lower part of the forks absolutely beautifully depicted if you built a Tamiya bike kit before, you'll know exactly what I mean. You've got no qualms that you're getting a high quality kit. Absolutely stunning bit of plastic. Only thing it needs doing is the disc needs drilling out. 
which is an easy job to do. Or if somebody brings out an aftermarket set at a later date, it will come with photo etched discs that are already drilled. Right, second sprue. We have wheels, chain, radiator, more engine parts, looks to be a clutch cover. Got the rear swing arm, hand controls, seat. Very, very nice. So we'll just come straight in with a close up on this. So all very nicely molded parts. The wheels are stunning, they really are. Absolutely beautiful wheels. The seat, wheel centre, the chain, which again, nicely depicted. Very nice indeed. Radiator, hand controls to the wheel, rear swing arm, so on and so forth. Beautifully molded, nicely detailed. This kit should build up real nice out of the box. And like I say, if somebody does, we got some aftermarket, it'll just enhance what looks to be an already nice kit. There we go, sprue number two. Shouldn't be the longest review in the world, this, because there's not that many parts to get through. Now, we have body panels. Now, these are already finished in a very similar colour that the bike is supposed to be. I'm going to flip that around. So, nice to see we have a one-piece tank. Uh, it's a highly visible part. can be a little bit of a pain to get the seam just right on it. Two piece front arch. We've got a stand on there as well. The dolly wheels. And the rest of it is bodywork. So have a look around, we'll go through each part. So as you see the colours there already. Very, very nice parts. Lovely colour, very nice uh, coloured sprue. You say the fuel tank, all in one piece, which is very nice, quite a tricky one to fill. Can be quite troublesome sometimes. Various intakes, with mesh depicted in them already. Those iconic front spoiler slash wings. Very, very nice. So, again, top quality molding by Tamiya. That front arch, any gluing together. A uh, little tip you ever do that, bob a little bit of super glue in the seam in the, underneath. So, when you're working on the plastic, you don't crack it because it has happened to me. I find a little bit of CA go underneath helps strengthen it. So there we go. Come around for a quick look again. That fuel tank is beautiful. The styling of this machine is fantastic. Very, very aggressive looking thing. It's got all the right angles and shapes and all the right places. It looks to be absolutely beautiful. Now we've got the front cowling. Uh, sorry. The front fairing. And scratch it on the staple. Yes, I'm moaning about the staples again. Staples actually fart, I think. So this thing is uber aggressive. As you can see, it's just so angular and angry. It looks like an angry, angry face. It's a very, very cool. But what I will say is trying to polish that up is going to be a challenge, to say the least. But a beautiful, beautiful looking thing. Very, very striking. Um, it is a beautiful looking machine. It's just so aggressive. Uh, if you've not seen it, go watch some videos on YouTube of it. Uh, the sheer noise out of it. I believe it's too noisy to be allowed in any UK tracks. Um, it's an absolutely phenomenal machine. Just such an aggressive. Look at that, that could be a head off some, I don't know, some kind of weird dragon. A couple of eyes there, the mouth. That's amazing. Really is a beautiful kit. Of an absolutely outstanding machine. Like I say, if you've not seen this bike, go look at some YouTube clips. You'll be like, wow. Uh, I think it's 350 horsepower, is it? Uh, 250 mile an hour top speed. Um, it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Staple is in there. I'm going to get that bad boy out of there. There we go. So it's scratching my fairing. I know I always complain about the staples. Right, we have clear parts. This is where I hate the staples. There we go. One out. 
two out, just heat seal the bags, so much easier. There we are, it's the clear part, so you've got the front screen, and I'm assuming the brake light for the rear. Obviously this thing isn't road legal, so it got slick tyres and no indicators or signals. Just I'm assuming the brake light slash tail light. Clear parts, typical Tamiya, no problem there at all. Crystal, crystal clear. Barely any distortion at all. Absolutely top quality. What's not to like about Tamiya clear parts? Beautiful, absolutely stunning. So very, very nice. And then we've got our chrome parts with the exhaust, rear light deflector. This will be stripped. I'm not a fan of chrome parts, although the newer stuff is definitely better. It's definitely too shiny for its own good. But it's high quality. If you did choose to leave it, it's beautiful. But you are going to have all the little nubs to clean up. And you're going to have to touch them up and it kind of ruins the finish. So pop them in some bleach for me. Get all the chrome finish off and respray it in, I don't know, Alclad, Extreme Metal, Mr. Hobby Super Metallics. And away you go. But the quality of the uh, chrome in it is lovely. Very nice part as well. It's a very interesting looking exhaust with some beautiful heat staining to it. And again, should you choose to leave them be, you wouldn't have a problem. Just trying to clean up the nubs is a little bit of a problem where you cut the sprue off. Very, very nice. Beautiful chrome. Really is nice. Uh, if it wasn't as shiny, it'd probably be okay to leave. But I suppose you could mac coat it and see what it looks like. But for me, I just strip it. I find it easier. Right, last bag of bits. And then we're on to decals and instructions. We know we're going to get instructions. It's a Tamiya kit. So in here we have a spring for the rear swing arm suspension. We've got two slick tyres, which I'm assuming are going to have seams. And indeed they do. So you need to go at those with a bit of sandpaper or a U. I find the black and then the grey UMP sander makes short work of these. Tried a lot of tip tricks in the past, put them in the freezer. I don't find that helps at all. But half an hour, not even that, 20 minutes, and it'll be gone, done. And that with the front tires a lot shinier than the back one. Uh, but it's nice pliable rubber, very nice. Typical Tamiya mesh, um, that's the stuff that needs probably ditching. I'm um, not sure where it goes, oh, it's on the front intake. Um, yeah, you're better off with normal mesh, so hopefully somebody aftermarket will bring that out. You've got your typical Tamiya vinyl hoses, which again, um, usually a little bit out of scale. You're probably best using wire for it as well. It depends on what it's depicting. This will be a large radiator hose, and this will be small, but they often depict it for brake lines, and it is over scale. It's a little bit too much, so use your references, have a look and see if you need this or you actually do need wire but you get it with it anyway you get your typical iconic Tamiya screwdriver some poly caps, literally two in there a little bit of thread off our mesh and a bag of screws, several different sizes different colours, different types for screwing on various components if you've not built a Tamiya kit before you literally assemble in stages, screw bits together and you can, yeah, to a degree, unscrew everything back down to the sub-assemblies and uh, start again, kind of, if you, if you wish to. Uh, they do build up very well. And very easily as well. It's all in the painting and the finishing on these bikes. Uh, Tammy does the hard work in making a nice, easy-to-assemble kit. And uh, I love these bike kits. I've got dozens of them in the stash, which shows how much I like them. Right, so we've got decals, instructions, and a bit of information on the bike as well. Uh, so I'll let you guys read that first. So I'll point that there. It's all English at the top, so if you want to read that, have a little read. There's a lot of information there, I ain't even going to bother reading all that. So there you go, if you want to read it, have a pause. So there's that. Decals. Which are heat sealed but not properly sealed, which is a shame. I'm assuming we're going to have cartograph decals. And we have some metallic ones too, which are nice. I'm going to get them out of the pack. 
They're rather nice. I've used those before on something else. And they work very, very well. So they're for all your name badges on the uh, the back and what have you. And then decals, which are not labelled as cartographs. So whether they're Tamiya's own, I don't know. But they're the decal sheets. You've got your green stripes for the wheels. I assume they're for wheels. Yes, they're for the wheels. Uh, green stripes for the front cowling. Uh, the streaks up the top. So on and so forth. We've also got the names for the back. It looks to be something for the clutch, is it? Must be. Speedo, rev counter, the Brembo brake discs. Uh, various other bits and bobs on there as well. The decals. Yeah, they look alright. Uh, whether they are cartograph, I don't know. Does it say on the box? It normally does. Let's have a look. We have the cartograph symbol on there. I don't think we do. No, we don't. Wow, it's unusual, Tammy. I thought you would have used cartograph. But the, the symbol isn't on there, so they must be Tammy's own decals. Let's hope they're uh, not troublesome at all. But not a massive amount on there. There's a few. Uh, they look okay. I can't see any problem with them at all. They're on register. There's a little bit of carrier film on the back of some of them. As you can see when I catch a light on them. But some microset and sol and solver set if you need it. And they should lay down just fine. I would certainly be keeping my eye out for builds. I have seen a build today. Didn't see any information on the build itself though. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for any information out there. So there we go. There's the decals. Shame they're not cartograph. Uh, I would have thought they would have been. But obviously Tamiya deemed the fit not to include them. So instructions. Last part. So on the front we've got the picture of the bike. Read before assembly, your cautions, paints required, and recommended tools. Um, step one, start with the engine, typical of a Tamiya bike kit. Uh, obviously you've got your tech tips for cutting off parts, test fitting, removing metal plating as well. And then yeah, we start with cylinder block assembly. Which looks fairly straightforward onto the framework, the stand, swing arm, the chain, Wheels and tyres as well. As always with Tamiya decals, everything is labelled crystal clear. Uh, they really are easy to follow. Not too technical at all. On to getting the rear wheel and the swing arm. The swing arm attached to the main frame. The exhaust. A little bit of work involved with the exhaust. So you've got several components to glue on. So if you're going to paint it, I will paint it all as one. Then get your heat stain sorted. Probably uh, for me, it'd be alkalad, translucent colours. They're hot, uh, metal violet, blue, red, sepia. Uh, get good effects. And on to the front uh, forks and wheel, radiator, so on and so forth. It's a typical Tammy bag kit. If you've built one, it's a standard kit. If you haven't, they're very, very easy to follow. They're not too demanding at all. It's literally treat every part of it as a stage and then assemble it. So, engine frame, rear swing arm, front forks, bodywork, so on and so forth. Treat it all as sub-assemblies and you can't go wrong at all. Uh, with the bikes it's all about your paintwork and your finishing really as well. Try and assemble them as neat as you can and paint them as, to your best of your ability. Yeah, we're onto the handlebars, the lights, seat frame and yeah, anything needed. So if it's a decal, it's clearly labeled it's paint a screw, uh, what they actually do for a screw is give you the full size uh, picture of the screw so you can literally offer it up to make sure it's the correct type it tells you the black as well um, so you can't really go wrong at all they are very clear and concise time instructions are kind of the industry uh, benchmark for instructions so not much to depict there bodywork, quite a bit going on there with the cowling so you have to pay attention to an assemble in those obviously get it all assembled uh, before you um, start painting things up and whatnot, and then we're on to the front uh, sections as well, and markings and painting as well. So you got a metal transfer. I see the metal transfer goes on first, and then we're applying the decals over the top. I see. So that's pretty straightforward, not too difficult to follow at all. And then onto the back, painting. So let's see what it says about painting, what it's recommending. It doesn't give a colour. 
So the upper cowl and the wings are in bare carbon fibre, so they're going to be fun to carbon fibre up. Uh, with all those different angles, that's going to be real fun. It'll look very cool though, because I've used the carbon fibre for many times before. Um, mirror finish black chrome is what the actual colour is. So let's see what Tamiya recommends for the bodywork. So, black chrome, so TS40. Let's see what TS40 is, and it is a metallic black colour. So there we go. Whether that's going to depict the colour, I don't know. I do have a paint set. I bought some zero paints. It's knocking around here somewhere. There it is. Uh, I got this set from Hero Boy, which includes uh, the frame colour, the clear coat, um, some of Chris Hale's C1 Metalizer powder. So this would be the way to check it. Uh, obviously, get the frame colour in there as well. So that's what I'm going to try and use. But I'll be interested to see if that recommended Tamiya colour does actually fit. Because uh, I would be surprised if it does, but you never know. You never know at all. So there we go. There's Tamiya's brand new H2R Ninja bike kit. Uh, typical Tamiya bike kit. What's not to like? Excellent kit. Uh, great instructions. Decals. A bit disappointed in our cartograph, but hey, they should go down well. Um, and I'll certainly be looking out for the builds of this on the internet to see how people go and what colours they use on their bodywork as well. Tamiya's recommending that TS40. I'd be interested to see how close a match it actually is to it. Um, if you're looking at carbon fibre film, have a look at the scale motorsport stuff. I've used it for a long time. Um, well, I say a long time. I'm a past few bike builds. And it's you can give it quite a bit of abuse. Um, once you start laying it down, put a bit of micro set and sole on top, and you can really start to conform. And it will take quite a bit of abuse before it breaks or rips. Um, so that's what I'll be using on those front uh, parts which are going to look very, very cool in the carbon fibre effect. Um, and there we go. So that's it. So it looks a great kit. Uh, I'm looking forward to building it. I'm a real quandary of whether to build it out of the box or wait a little bit, wait for some aftermarket. Um, I'm not a fan of building brand new kits because you find a lot of people tend to build them. Uh, I'd rather wait a little bit and just build it on my own at my own pace. We shall see. But it looks a great kit. And if you're thinking about getting one, don't think, go and get it. If you've never built a Tamiya bike kit, I'd say everybody needs to build one because you'll either love it or hate it, and most people I know, they love them. As long as you pick a newer kit, not all the older ones, something like this, the Panagali, the RCV213, the newer kits, they go together so well. Um, I built the Panagali for my first bike kit back um, for like 10 years, and wow, that kit was amazing. It flew together, and it went together no problem at all, and I really picked the right kit to start with. So there we go. So, if you want to go and get it, go and get it. Definitely go and get it. It looks a great kit. I've been waiting for this for some time, and uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful looking machine, and uh, it's a fantastic addition to my stash. So, there we go. So, as usual, uh, you're on the channel, so subscribe to our channel. Give us a comment. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Let us know what you like or you didn't like about the video or any comments or criticisms. Please let us know. If you do, give us a thumbs down. Please tell us why, because we always like to improve our videos. Uh, make sure you check out our Tuesday and Friday live shows. Um, they happen every week at half seven UK time, eight thirty Europe, and um, two thirty. No, is it two? No, it's one thirty now Central U uh, US. Uh, go check out the forum, International Scale Modeler, which is interscalemodeler.com. Go check out our Facebook page, International Scale Modeler, and obviously go and check out mine and Lee's business, uh, Ultimate Modeling Products, because we sell loads of modeling products you can need and want, model kits, all sorts of stuff. Go check us out as well. So there we go. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Have fun and take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.